360, we talk about a Base Plus program. And it's really all about flexibility, and even better, it's about saving money. It's about being always right, no matter what kind of a growing season nature throws at us. And I can remember in the early days, before we had the ability to do wide drop mid-late season, we were under the gun to always guess ahead of time. So let's take a look at three years. Let's take 2012, a drought year, a generational worst drought for me. 2015, here in central Illinois, all time wettest. And then the tremendous year we had last year in 2016 where everything just seemed to go right. Started off a super spring and it stayed that way weather-wise, so we had a ton of mineralization. In other words, weather was so conducive that we did not have to put on a lot of nitrogen. So let's break it down and talk about how a base plus program would work. In 2012 in the drought, where back then I had too much on too early, I couldn't react. There's a $25 an acre savings by being able to say, you know what? We're gonna be 100 bushel corn instead of 250. We wouldn't need all that nitrogen on out ahead. And there's $25 that we could put in our pocket. Quite the opposite in 2015. We definitely need it more in. And we were able to come in in a base plus program, monitor, see that the tank was running empty. We recharged that fuel tank in the field late in the season. And we were able to put 14 bushel national average across the country, all across the country, using the same amount of nitrogen by changing the timing and the placement. In other words, we didn't have that nitrogen at risk. Yes, we spent a little more money, but 40 bushel was very, very common in many fields with 14 across the board average. There's $50 right there. Then we come to 2016, where everything seemed to line up. The Base Plus program was quite an advantage to us. So where we had on pre-plant 100 units with the planter and pre-plant, then we came back in of 80 units the 85 units right at shoulder high corn and V10 with a planned third pass with wide drop at tassel time. When we saw nature giving us lots of free dollars of nitrogen, we didn't apply the last 50 pounds. And so we put in our pocket 25 extra dollars an acre just in inputs. So then when you go back and look at our national trials across the country and we saw a seven to 10 bushel average there, we put another $25 in our pocket and so all of a sudden, we were back to $50, just like we were in 2015, and of $25 in 2012, it becomes an obvious choice for Base Plus because time always lets us win. Time is our friend when it comes to nitrogen application. The longer we wait, the more we know about the status of our soil nitrate levels. Look at a rainfall history chart, and it becomes easier to see how we can make smarter application decisions later in the season. This chart shows the last five years of rainfall in Tremont, Illinois for the corn growing season. You can see our drought year of 2012 and the wet year of 2015. If we put all of our nitrogen down pre-plant, we have no way to adjust our application based on the differences in the growing season. Our nitrogen is sitting there, vulnerable to the weather. In a dry year, We've overspent on in because the plant can't take up what we've supplied. But if we had planned a late season application, say early July, we could have lowered our application rate and pocketed 20 to $30 an acre. We know that an inch of rain moves nitrogen six inches down. So look how many years of pre-plant application would have been flushed by a heavy rain event. In three out of the five years, we had flushing rains in June. This year, we had heavy rains in both late April and July. So in four out of the last five years, the flexibility of a late season application means we could have made meaningful adjustments to our nitrogen plan and either saved input money or protected yield potential. We're in a central Illinois cornfield that's been without rain for 18 days. We're approaching the mid 90s in multiple days here. With my handy little digital meat thermometer, we're at 111 degrees 
and three inches of soil depth. But at the same time, the field I'm in here has been on the Base Plus program for 360. In other words, it has 100 pounds of nitrogen put on with the planter. So we are approaching V9, and in about another week to 10 days, we're gonna be in here at Y Drop applying nitrogen right beside this stalk, preloading success for a high yield come ear fill. So Base Plus program gives us peace of mind because if this would continue, 2012, this heat and drought continued all the way to harvest. The problem was in 2012, Greg had on 240 pounds of nitrogen. We're here if only 100 pounds on, I have a lot of different ways that I can jump at any given time. As we talk about a Base Plus system for nitrogen, and we come into a field like this one today, at a V11 stage of growth. It's pretty exciting as we monitor the very lowest leaves and you see there's no nitrogen drawdown. It's a quick indication that nature has been on our side here. And the microbials, who we call Mike, are working really hard. So for every percentage of organic matter, you get about 20 pounds of nitrogen. So if nature's cooperating like it is here, we could receive as much as 80 to 100 pounds of free N, and it makes me smile when I don't have to write that large of a check. So the yield goal in this field is 240, and we know we're gonna be in applying probably about that 230 pounds. But as we come in and we probe and we use our soil scan, we can see that we have plenty of extra N available to us. So before the Y drop comes in here next week, We'll be monitoring this field saying, do we really need to go to that 230 level? In all reality, as I watch this field go, we'll use about 185 pounds and probably it'll take us right into harvest. And that's quite a savings when we take a look at that, at least $20 an acre that you and I put directly back into our pocket. You know, as corn growers, we always wanna know how much end do we really need to apply to maximize yields? And it's a challenge for us. For years, as I would side dress, I would try to figure out what amount do I need to put on in June to finish the race for October 1st. The field behind me is a nitrogen study. So to set this up, we did blocks at 100 pounds of pre-plant nitrogen. The next block had 200 pounds on pre-plant or all in and all done before the planter ran. And then we have a block of just 30 units with the planter that gives us the opportunity to watch how nitrogen works throughout the growing season. As we're applying nitrogen today in this field, it's all about nitrogen placement. The John Deere sprayer behind me with the 360 Y drop will put it on two different rates. It'll put it on 100 pounds in one pass, right next to the stalk on both sides, right above our root system. It will also be doing a 60 pound pass where we will come back then at VT with additional 40 to bring that block up to 100 pounds. Where the colder cart will be positioned 100 pounds of in, dead center of the 30 inch row, about two and a half inches deep into the moist soil. The dry box urea spreader will have a 60 foot pattern with its fan. And that 100 pounds of urea pellets will be over the top of this growing crop. One of the things we'll be watching is for some leaf burn. Also, the pellets will be on top of the ground and weather will have a real effect. The most amazing thing about creation and corn plants is how this world is designed to capture rainfall and increase the water amount around the base of the plant. But at the same time, it becomes a negative when we think of that dry application and those fan applicators coming over. Those pellets get down in this world and this is what creates the leaf burn. Another thing I'm always looking for in V7 corn is any kind of nutrient deficiency. And I can pick up the striping already starting here on sulfur deficiency. And that's common with the kind of environmental things we've had happen with the coal plants and clean coal. We now find ourselves applying sulfur every time we apply in. I put a ratio of one to 10. In other words, if I'm using 30 gallon of a UAN, I'm gonna have three gallon of sulfur in to take care of these kind of leaf issues. In these study blocks, all the same amount of N is being applied up to 200 pounds. 
but there's also some blocks in here for the real world where you and I farm each and every day. And so for my own personal farm, we apply 100 pounds with the planter pre-plant. And then we sit and wait and let time go by and we measure for our soil scan so we hit it on the button. So we'll represent that today by putting 60 pounds on at this stage. Then we'll continue to monitor and we have the ability at V10, V12, shoulder high, head high corn to either increase or hold off in less amount. So we let nature take its course. Where we have the 200 pound study blocks in the back where water will be going over it representing exactly 2015, we know we'll run out and we'll need more in and there'll be more dollars invested to create the high yield. We're standing out here in our nitrogen study blocks and we laid out different blocks at 60 foot every 24 rows of different amounts of in applied at different times throughout the growing season. This last block here we only put on 30 pounds of nitrogen banded with the planter. No other nitrogen applied. Our hope was to create some really high stress plants. And yes, on this side of the south side of this middle lane, we're in, you can see I'm standing in the irrigation track, we're in duplicating the rainfall of 2015, the wettest growing season for us on record. And you can see that we put this plant somewhat in stress but at the same time, I was just teasing the guys here, maybe we ought to go to 30 pounds in is all we apply because we're gonna make corn. My hope was this corn would only be about four feet high and extremely yellow. Then we would come in three weeks ago and use a wide drop pass of 70 units just to see if we could spike it and green it up. So as we look at 30 only banded, you can see the bottom leaf and this leaf, third leaf, even the fourth leaf starting to show some signs of nitrogen deficiency, and it's the classic, straight up the center. Then we come just 24 into the 30 inches away, and you can see three weeks ago, we came into this and we put on nitrogen with the wide drop at 70 units. So now we have 100 pounds on, 30 banded with the planter. Then we come in right beside the stalk and put another 70 for a total of 100. At the end of the day, with the water that we've had on this, we're gonna raise a pretty decent crop. So what we're looking at here just shows that some nitrogen at the right place at the right time can make quite a difference. And you can see it here at the bottom of the plant. So let's take a look at the results. Let's start with the dry, non-irrigated side where nature itself, where the colder ran right down the center of the row of 100 pounds of UAN, we ended up with 206.3 bushels. Right next to it, the urea with the pellets through the buggy, we ended up with a 210.9. So the urea was about 4.6 bushel better. Right next to that with the wide drop. Remember, we're talking about placement here. The hose running on each side of the stalk, 231.7 bushel for 25.4 bushel advantage. So now let's take a look on the south side of this plot where we had the irrigator running, representing the 2015 rainfall. Remember, a lot of rainfall in 2015. And it shows up here. You can see the colder in the center of the row at the 100 units of UAN went 194.8. Right next to it, the urea pellets in the wet side went about a 3.9 bushel advantage. Then we came to the wide drop, where placement is so critical. Right on each side of the stalk, we had a 27.7 bushel advantage really proves out when we're super wet, placement matters. You'll notice that our plan to reproduce 2015 if a lot of water worked. All the yields on the irrigated side are lower than the non-irrigated side where nature just did its natural thing. So is there value in spoon feeding nitrogen? Let's take a look at the blocks where we had all the nitrogen on and a once and done, 170 weed and feed and 30 with the planter, where we compared it to 100 with weed and feed, and then coming back and spoon feeding an additional 100, only at different applications. So the colder and urea versus wide drop. The colder actually ended up about 4.6 bushel less than the 200 pounds once and done. The urea was dead even. And then the wide drop at a V7 of 100 pounds actually ended up being about 20.8 bushel better. 
at V15, which was a little late when we come to spoon feeding, it was only 13.6 bushel better of wide drop over the once and done. And then when we come in with a two pass wide drop, some of boot high corn at V7 and some at V15. So 60 pounds of V7, 40 of V15. We had a 36.7 bushel advantage. And that makes a lot of sense to me when we understand how the summer went. If we think about now over on the irrigated side, where we had 2015 rainfall, things start to switch up some. The 200 pounds of all on went at 194.1. Colder, just about a bushel better. Urea, about 4.6 bushel better. Then we went the Y drop in the V7. We ended up with a 28.4 bushel gain over 200 pounds all on at once. The V15, went 234 for a 40.6 bushel gain. And you can see that that much water, once again, placement matters. Then we come in and we did the split up on the wet side. It's different than over on the dry side, where we had 60 on at V7 and then all that rainfall, it flat washed it out. And we came back of just 40 at V15, we only ended up being 32 bushel better. So there's about an eight bushel difference there. It makes sense to me because of all that additional rainfall at V7, that nitrogen moved and we should have come back with more than 100 pounds of E15. We could have taken it right back up in that 240 bushel range. Now I realize the yields we're taking out of these nitrogen blocks are kernel counts that our agronomists went in and collected ear count and kernels. But at the same time, it shows us that we're able to duplicate a lot of different placement styles in a lot of different weather events. So a base plus system lets us be very nimble and flexible. And it always lets us be right with nature and the weather events that we have throughout the year. And so for our team, whether it's dry or whether it's wet, I wanna win. And wide drop application lets us do that. And at the end of the day, you and I can put more money in our pockets.